Hi guys, this is Andrew Holmes, and every single Sunday we come to you with uh, new information when it comes to talking about real estate and what you can do in the Chicagoland area. So today uh, in the studio, I have two interesting guests. Uh, number one is going to be from OG Consulting, is uh, Orlando, Orlando Gonzalez. So Orlando, welcome. Thank you. Um, and uh, Tom uh, Banano. So we're going to talk about kind of what it takes to do uh, rehabs in Chicago, uh, the permitting process, the in and out of it, where people find themselves in uh, trouble. So I'm going to start with Orlando, uh, with you first. You know, everybody wants to get into doing flips. They want to do uh, build outs. They want to do all sorts of things. So number one, what exactly do you do? And uh, where are the things you see people getting in trouble uh, before they come and go, oh my God, I did stuff and now the city basically, you know, has a uh, stop work order. What type of things do you see happening in today's market? Uh, a lot of so let's start with okay. first uh, kind of a brief intro of what you do sure. exactly. Uh, what I do is uh, I'm an architectural consultant. I uh, consult uh, with architects and engineers. Mm -hmm. So I do new construction, <coughs> residential, commercial, uh, rehabs, new construction and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, we get that twice. Um, and, uh, and that's pretty much it. Okay. Got it. So, um, I guess let me, uh, introduce uh, Tom also. So Tom, uh, what, what do you do exactly in terms of, uh, this whole process of permitting and the whole thing about when it comes to building in Chicago? Uh, I've been doing this 23 years. People uh -huh. call me and they ask, um, what they should do if they're going to flip. Okay. They need plans. Mm -hmm. Generally, if they're doing uh, additions, they need plans. Mm -hmm. uh, if they need consultant, I give them consulting. I do business licenses. Okay. And I just, I, I'm in general help out and I expedite the plans through. Okay. Uh, I get them done quicker. Okay. Uh, maybe not quicker than the next guy, but I do them as fast. I stay on it. Right. And uh, we do the reviews. And then uh, when they get done, I, I get them the permit and okay. they're done. Got it. The so, same with same with liquor or business license. Okay, so same with liquor business license. Reason is this: like, I mean, obviously we have called you guys. Uh, you were referred to over by our buddy Dan, mm -hmm. who happens to be a uh, fellow investor. Because I think what happens is a lot of times is that there's really nobody that can hold a investor by the hand and say you need to do this number one, this number two, this number three, and walk them through the process, right? That if yeah, I people, knew, people usually don't know what to do. Okay, yeah. so people get themselves in they trouble. They may have money, but they don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Okay, so it's not, because we have tried that approach, right? I mean, yeah. you said something key, which is a lot of times people will throw money at the problem yes. and think that's going to uh, fix the issue. Yeah. And we're here to guide. Okay. And that's so, what we're good at. Okay, so your job is to guide people through, yes. hold their hands oh, yes. through the process. Absolutely. So where do you think uh, a lot of times whenever people are getting started? Like, I mean, I know we did a uh, project uh, recently uh, in the city where they said to us, well, you don't need a permit um, for kind of stuff you were doing, hardwood floors, that kind of stuff. In the end, I find out after the property sold that uh, the city is sending us basically, you know, there's a uh, thing to report. Deficiency letters. Right. Okay. What is that called? Deficiency Deficiency letters. letters. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I get a deficiency letter. I get one for electrical. So we send the attorney to court. Uh, fix it, pull after the fact permit, pay the fine, the whole thing, right? And I wish I had known the right process. I wish I had known you guys. So not even get into that mess because now you're going backwards yes. and solving a mess that you created. You gotta always remember you have to have licensed contractors for the jobs you're doing because if they aren't licensed, you, you put yourself in a bigger box. Okay, so because that's important that what you pointed out. Sometimes I think what people get this impression is, oh, I'm going to skirt the system. This is not about skirting the system. This is about following the thing by the book, mm -hmm. doing things correctly so that you don't get yourself in trouble. Because if something goes wrong, somebody gets hurt on your job, it can be a nightmare. And a lot of times people think, oh, it's wink, wink, nod, nod. And it's not a funny situation and that's the reason I wanted you guys to come in because um, I know uh, people have had instances where things happen you know and uh, somebody did not pull a license and they can mm -hmm. find themselves in a heap of trouble yeah, right you, from the city and from a legal standpoint from the legal in trouble. right because now I mean somebody gets really bad hurt on your property now it's not just and you haven't pulled a permit and you knew 
that you did not perform it. Now it's not just a civil matter; it can become a criminal matter, yeah. Yeah. right? Absolutely. I mean, this can life, safety. life and safety issues, yeah, and it can get out of um, kind of whack. So let me ask you this: What should be the first process? I mean, we would we are referring now people to you guys. If you're going to do something in the city, so what is how does it work? Do you guys go evaluate what the project is? Kind of can you walk yes. me through a couple we'll of the steps? To, yeah, we will have to evaluate, uh, meet meet with a client at the job site, evaluate what they're going to do to the site. If they're not moving any walls, I prefer not to do plans because okay. we can always do short form permits, okay. repair permits, okay. whatever I can do to cut the cost down for the client, I'm happy with that. Plans is my last resort doing plans. Even though it's my business, I don't like pushing plans on people because everybody has to make money, especially flipping. So uh, assess if we're moving any physical walls, bearing, non-load bearing, uh, plans are required. And I want to say 99% of the villages Sometimes they'll ask for an owner's uh, sketch. Okay. Uh, sometimes, and then after that, we'll you know start the design process, get it approved by the owner. I set my plans up, uh, set them up for the city, um, submit them, and then uh, you know they do the review and the city approves, and we're good to go. Um, In Chicago, the first thing we yeah. do is check the project, the address for any violations. Previous yeah, violations. for Chicago. Yes. Because yeah. if you have violations and you don't address them because you don't think you have to, then you're in even more problems because yeah. the violation yeah. is still on the property. Okay. So there'll be a cloud on the title. Right. Yeah. No, because I know they can get out of hand, and I want to talk yes. about a little bit later about some abandoned buildings, what can happen, because uh, the city has gotten really serious about this. Yes. And the reason it is because they don't want people to do, uh, doing things that are crazy, and especially when the building is, say, vacant, Right, and now what's going to happen is crazy people are going to move in, start doing interesting things. It uh, affects the neighborhood, and so the city takes this issue very, very, very seriously. And that's why what we have always said is, I think um, a lot of times what you realize in business is it is better to do things correctly from the front end, right? Uh, you're, both yes. of you guys are shaking your head. Yes, yes, yes we yes, always right? say that. We that always it's, say that. It's better to do, do it right, right than to do it right wrong. the first right. time because it'll cost <laughs> you know, us and the client money. And, and listen, and even we have known that, and uh, it's one of those things. You know, ninety-five percent of times uh, you do it the right way. Sometimes you're like, man, I don't think you're trying to second guess uh, what you think rather than uh, you know, kind of knowing people like you guys that say, hey guys, what do you? In your experience, you've done it for a long time. Yes. What do I do with this damn thing, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think a lot of times it's lost. I mean, I was totally, totally lost when we went and did that project. But now looking back at it, rather than this issue, uh, we would have just done it, just pulled the permit just in case. Yeah, um, the best thing. I might have spent a little bit more money at the time, but it's worth it. But it's you like know, gambling it's way. not more money. It's not more money because now going back, you got fines and everything else, and, yeah, and fixing it, true. and yeah. the stress yeah. and the headache of it. Yeah. I got to pay Daniel. You exactly. know, I got to call you guys. I got to yeah. get your help. Now I got to, and still I have to pull the permit anyways. Yes. You know, it's not That's like true. you're getting away with anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I just kind of wanted to uh, go through that as we got started today. Chicago Flipping with Andrew Holmes will return next Sunday at 12 noon. For information or questions about content of this show or to speak to Andrew, call 844-MONEY-55 or visit chicagocashflow.com to learn about upcoming seminars. That's 844-666-3955. And be sure to tune in next week.